If you've been following video games at all over the past couple of years, you've either heard of or have hopefully played The Last of Us, a 2013 post-apocalyptic video game by Naughty Dog, who's famous for their rich, well-thought-out, uh, very engaging games with really compelling stories like the Uncharted series and so on. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit today about what The Last of Us says about human nature and uh, what I got from the game when I played it. Uh, before I go any further, I should make it clear that there will be spoilers in this video. Um, if you haven't played The Last of Us and you don't want the plot spoiled for you, I would recommend turning off your computer, or rather turning off this video right now. Or maybe turn off your computer too. You know, never know what's going on in the outside world. Anyways, The Last of Us is a game with a very brutal view of human nature, but with just a tiny sliver of hope in there that makes its underlying message more complicated than might seem at first glance. Um, at the beginning of the game, basically the first segment where you play as Sarah is uh, something of a destruction of human innocence. Um, in addition to seeing Sarah through her eyes witness her father kill an infected, we get to see society gradually unravel around them as they fight to make their way out of their rural Texas home. And at the beginning of the segment, when Sarah dies in Joel's arms, on that day, Joel's innocence died. And 20 years later, you can see it in the way he acts. You can see how he shuts himself off from people in the world. How, even with someone like Tess, he finds it very hard to confront his emotions because he lives in a post-apocalyptic environment. He lives in a place where, to show humanity, to show sympathy, to show... Any sort of empathy is potentially lethal, especially when you're dealing with someone like the Hunters. Uh, this is illustrated a little bit later in the game at the scene in Pittsburgh, where Ellie uh, notices somebody who's injured and begs for help, but it turns out to be an ambush. And uh, Ellie later asks, Joel, how did you know that? And he says, I've been on both sides. So Joel has done whatever he can to survive, and that includes sacrificing a lot of his humanity. And we see this over and over in later parts of the game as well, with the cannibal compound where basically they kill people who are not part of their group in order to survive and eat them. As they journey across the United States, we see humanity at its worst. We see survival as the paramount goal. But is there more to it than that? Is there more to The Last of Us than just every man for himself, than just pure survival? I think there is. Um, the most obvious example of this is the character Ellie. Throughout the journey across the country, she has to go through a lot in order to survive. I mean, the entire winter segment is her basically fighting to keep Joel alive and keep herself alive. Now, at first glance, this might seem like just another indictment of human nature. I mean, Joel was brutally injured by these cannibals uh, when they were investigating the University of Colorado. But... Ellie's actions show us that humanity is not just a cruel, unforgiving menace that will kill the survive. Because Ellie, even though she could have let Joel die, chose not to. She has to mature and grow up and take care of him during that period when it seems like he's constantly on the brink of death. And even though she ends up developing a lot of survival skills and develops a more jaded perspective, she never quite loses her humanity because she still maintains that connection to Joel. The bond that they formed through traveling across the country has given her a strong enough reason to keep him alive no matter what the cost. The ending of the game really throws a wrench into both sides of this argument, humanity being unambiguously good and evil. I mean, as we all know, at the end, the Fireflies basically outright state they need to kill Ellie in order to... Uh, make sure that the vaccine, that her immunity to the cordyceps, will create uh, works. There's no other way to do it. She has to die to save humanity. But Joel fights his way through the Fireflies headquarters and saves her. Saves them, but in the process, perhaps dooming humanity as a whole. And that brings us to the last scene of the game. Home. Where they're returning to the compound that his brother created, Joel's brother created, as a way to survive without having to kill everyone they see. So in this scene, we see Joel has finally connected to Ellie as he did Sarah. He lost Sarah, 
but now he has a surrogate daughter, and he went through everything to bring her to Salt Lake City and then to save her. But he did so at the cost of perhaps dooming humanity as a whole. So here we have a view of human nature at the end of this that says that a person, when they develop a connection with somebody, they will have that human bond, perhaps to the point where they will doom the entire human race just to preserve that bond. Is it a indictment of humanity that Joel was not willing to sacrifice Ellie for the greater good? Or was it a good thing? Was it it, something that showed us that even after 20 years of fighting through a devastated landscape to survive, he still has his humanity. So I'm going to end this video with a question about both Ellie and Joel and the nature of the ending as it relates to the rest of the game. Do you think that Ellie and Joel's journey towards the compound at the end of the game is an optimistic note or a negative note? On the one hand, they're going to be part of a community where they won't have to fight to survive. On the other hand, what of the rest of humanity? What of everyone who could be saved from the cordyceps but won't now because Ellie is not in the lab being killed? It's not a question that has an easy answer, but it's one that I'm interested to hear your thoughts on. Thanks for listening. Andrew Walker out.